Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Welcome to tonight's show, Talking Point. I'm your host, Saeed Niaz Ahmed. In our studios today, we have a person who wears different caps at different types, different hats. She is a criminal lawyer, a football agent, a sports ambassador, and a great champion for women's rights and women's equal position in the society and in the world of business. Shamila Ahmed is well known. She was selected or declared, nominated as head of the 50 most powerful and influential women, business and sports women around the world in 2016 in Singapore. She advocates for a change and we are going to discuss how things are going to change. Welcome to the show, Shinila. How are you? I'm fine. Salam alaikum, everybody. Alaikum salam. It's a pleasure to welcome you. We have met before. You have been on this show before. And we are very keen to see. I've been following you, but we are very keen to know what have you been doing and how things have been working out for you. I think we met back in 2014. 14, yes. I see. So God, since then, I think a lot's happened. Right. Um, obviously, on the football side, right. there's been a lot of uh, more recognition. Right. And Many goals have been achieved. No, inshallah, <laughs> there's many more to be achieved yet, but still a long journey yeah. ahead. But it's been a roller coaster so far. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to Singapore, like you've already mentioned. I got the Asian Women Achievement Award. Yes. Yeah. And also. Was it 2017? No, I think that was in 2015 or 16. I can't remember the exact years because there's a little selection of awards which I've right. managed to collect on this journey in the short period. But what has actually been interesting is obviously the recognition the media has actually given me and the profile which has been built. And obviously um, trying to be the role model for the younger generation right. and inspiring them to do something out of the extraordinary and not to think we can't step into a certain industry because it's dominated by men. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the achievements so far, which is taking the baby steps, as you would say, into working in the football industry. Um, as, a, as a criminal lawyer, I mean, uh, you were doing a different kind of job, as you see, in court, and now you are out of court in the playing field, you see. How does uh, football feature, and it, as you said, it fell into your lap? Well, going back to my criminal work, a lot of my clients are males. Mm -hmm. So it's not really, I'm not doing anything different. I'm still working with a lot of males in the football industry as well. Right. You get, I come but across. But they're not criminals. <laughs> well, if you read in the media, some of them do end up um, getting into trouble, not mentioning any names. So you do get the footballers yeah. even getting into the wrong side of the law. So all I'm doing is I've taken off my daytime hat yeah. and I'm just wearing a different hat. But again, the job what I'm doing is I'm just representing the clients up in, to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. I'm doing. What does it involve? I mean, a football agent, I understand about a lawyer, yes, you see, you talk to your clients, you plead uh, their cases, but how do you go about it? A football agent, what does he do? Well, with the football agent, obviously, I mean, people out there know football players, especially in the English Premier League, right. they get paid so much. Um, you always hear about the two transfer windows. The next one is the January one, which is coming up. Mm -hmm. What um, happens in the transfer windows period? In the transfer window period, that's the only time players are allowed to move clubs. Right. It's only twice in a year mm -hmm. a player can move unless they're going on a loan, which happens in March. But they have only one season, but they're allowed twice a year. That's, I don't make the rules. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make the rules. The rules are already made. So um, the whole purpose of the transfer window is for the clubs to see how they can strengthen their squads. Right. You get new managers coming in. Some players may not fit into their current team. Mm -hmm. And in order for them to strengthen their squad, that's when certain players will be sold, loaned out, and new players are brought into the team. So it's basically buying and selling market at that yeah. time. Uh, we, we, he, we hear of, uh, read of huge sums, uh, 
30 million, 32 million. And yes, uh, which we, we got paid that much. <laughs> yes, uh, oh, why not? Yes, we deserve it, you deserve it. The, the, what, who gets the chunk of it? The football player himself, his agent, uh, the club, who? What you've got to remember is all this money has generated as a result of the media and the commercial deals yeah. and Sky Channel, BT Sports with the number of games being shown. That's how the income is generated. So a certain percentage will go to the clubs, it depends where they finish. And then obviously the players when it comes to the transfer. So they, they, the players get the biggest chunk? No, they get the salary. You get the transfer fee is what yeah. goes to the club because if the player's already on a contract right. and they want to end the contract, then the club will say, this is the transfer fee we want for that player before he can join your club. Right. So that would go to the club. But sometimes I read that the players are loaned out. What is that? Oh, that's just where they've, they've obviously not reached a an agreement in order to sell the player. Mm -hmm. They've just loaned the player out for a season. That way mm -hmm. the club is probably picking up half of its salary or a percentage and the club what it's loaned out to meets the other part of the salary. So a player does not have a permanent contract with a particular no, club? No, 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 no. Players have to have a contract. It's a binding contract. Normally the contracts are for three years. So, but they're being bought and sold? No, no, no. Th that's where you get the transfer fee that comes in. So if the player wants, if the player or the club wants to come to a mutual agreement, mm -hmm. then you've got the transfer fee. Mm -hmm. A free player is normally when the player's contract has come to an end, then there's no transfer fee, then the player can say, right, um, I'm re the contract's coming to an end, he's a free player, so his agent will try and find a new club for him mm -hmm. before the transfer window closes. It's like selling your house uh, before the time, see, and then you end up paying fines for <laughs> paying off your mortgage before the time, rather than... <laughs> That's one way if you want to put it, yes. Uh, this idea that women are not represented at the top level of business, and you have often mentioned here and there, uh, caught between the, the demands of home, family, social life and professional life see i know this is this this is very difficult this makes a, a woman's life very difficult but uh, how can women particularly asian women cope with all this pressure and they still have a successful career i mean going back to you having a successful career i think um, you've got to have the good support of your family mm -hmm not just your family, your work colleagues as well, and friends in order to balance your life. And it's how determined you are also in order to achieve what you want to achieve. So it's prioritizing what's more important to you and juggling being on the personal side, on the family side, and pursuing your career. So I look at Theresa May, she runs the country, she's a woman. <coughs> so it's all about how you can manage and balance your and life. A lot of people will have a different opinion about that a statement. I'm not, not getting, yes. I'm not getting into <laughs> involved into politics, but at the end no, of the no, day, just, yeah. Yeah, I'm just mentioning it. But all these uh, achievements uh, so far of uh, women this and uh, lady that, and we had uh, Margaret Thatcher and now we have Theresa May and we have uh, Angela Merkel and we have uh, Sheikh Hasina and we have uh, in other countries we have lady in ladies in politics uh, we had uh, in Pakistan we had Benazir Bhutto and all that so despite that inequality exists uh, you as a leader I would consider uh, in your own sphere how do you think that we can tackle this inequality well, the inequalities, basically, say for example, my career, I know when I started doing criminal work, mm -hmm. back in my time, it was mainly predominantly m men lawyers, men barristers, not that many females wanted to mm -hmm. do crime. Mm -hmm. But now, in the circle I work in, there isn't a shortage, you've got a lot of the females who are doing cr um, criminal work. Mm -hmm. It's how you can do your job, yeah. that's the recognition which is given to you. 
and now, obviously, now I've stepped into another career, which is a football side. Yeah, so mainly men. Don't it's mainly men, but you asked me the question at the beginning: How did the football scouting and the football agent fall yeah. into your lap? Yeah. That was as a result of the male colleagues, who are the ones who actually encouraged me to do this. So you can't say you're not getting the support from the m male environment. I I have, and that's how I've ended up getting into the football side. And the training which I've had has actually come from my male colleagues. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there's nothing to say women can't get involved into doing football and becoming a football agent. It's whether or not you, as a female, think you can do the job. And I know there's a lot of women out there who can do it, so you shouldn't shy away from the fact just because it's male orientated that we can't do it. We can do it. Yeah. Yeah, this is this question comes up because this is out of ordinary. You see, uh, becoming a nurse, a teacher, uh, uh, a doctor, uh, uh, even a politician, a councillor, a mayor—that's been well. It's now acceptable and accepted. But uh, somebody like uh, becoming uh, even pilots, uh, people applying. Uh, well, I know that uh, I know when I flew out from India was it last year? It was a female pilot. Yeah. So mm. you know that the women are actually going into other industries as opposed right. to doing the normal teaching or being a teacher that more and more girls are actually going into becoming engineers and taking a step in other direction as opposed to the obvious right. direction and choosing the obvious careers yes well I mean uh, I was shocked uh, pleasantly shocked when I saw the first uh, taxi cab driver lady in Germany I mean it's a nice car and it's a very young lady driving as a taxi driver and I was surprised see, because uh, where I come from, uh, came from at that time, <laughs> it wouldn't have been possible. <laughs> yeah, but you see women here in England, bus drivers, yes. female bus drivers. Yes. Now you see more of them. Now it is, them. I mean, society is changing, yes. but it'll take years to come, but the younger generation would obviously be more influential in choosing other careers as opposed to choosing the obvious mm -hmm, careers. Mm -hmm, but it's all mm -hmm. the support which has to be given. This is a good sign, isn't it? See? Yes. The, the equality, the much desired equality is making its way and it's being felt by yes. both the genders. See? Yes. So, and also because uh, uh, there is uh, now so many jobs uh, that really can be handled and probably women are, ladies are more uh, adept and they're more they can concentrate, do the desk job much better than men who would like to move around and even even drive a lorry. Well, going on to that, even in the construction industry, you see a lot of the women in that now. You see them on the site, you yes. know, surveyors yes. and also. So it's a step in the right direction, but it'll take time. Yes, my 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 own niece is uh, is a, is an engineer in. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Chemical engineer, and she's with working with some uh, huge <laughs> plants, <laughs> drilling, and all that. So, uh, we would like to know about uh, talk about the, the the percentage of Asians in football, but uh, in the next segment, as we have almost come to the end of this first segment. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Uh, we'll be back soon after this short break.